Cue music. Fade up music. Cue smoke machines. Fade up lights. You say you want a revolution? Well, how about instead of talking about it, you go out and do something. I'm gonna show you how to get it done. This is Epic How To. Lead a revolution. Before we get started, let's be clear, we're not advocating violence. In fact, nonviolent movements can enact as much, if not more, change than violent ones. According to a recent study of over 300 violent and nonviolent political movements since 1900 by political scientist Erica Chenoweth and Maria Stefan, nonviolent revolutions have a 53% success rate, compared to just a 23% success rate for violent revolutions. Chenoweth and Stefan found that nonviolent revolutions work better because they attract more participants who either don't believe in violence or who don't want to take the risk of getting killed. <laughs> because getting killed sucks. Put that on a poster and sell it. Nonviolent revolutions are also harder for governments to suppress. Bonus! When a government uses violence against a nonviolent resistance, it tends to encourage even more civilians to take action and mobilize. History is full of successful nonviolent revolutions. The 1963 March on Washington was one of the largest political rallies in US history. Here, Martin Luther King Jr. delivered his famous I Have a Dream speech. This march is often credited with the passing of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, outlawing many discrimination and racial segregation policies of the time. Way back in 1988, the people of Chile democratically voted fascist dictator Augusto Pinochet out of office. Pinochet was forced to step down and was eventually arrested in London in 1998 for murder, torture, and kidnapping. What a dick. He died before he could ever stand trial, furthering his jerkness and not giving us the satisfaction. It's crazy how death isn't ultimately satisfactory. Sometimes you just gotta kick them in their fascist nuts. Fascist nuts is a business that I plan on starting. I'm trademarking that mother <laughs> Get ready, you can get it with that poster that I pitched earlier in the video. More recently, the Cedar Revolution, a Lebanese movement that opposed the Syrian occupation of Lebanon, was successful using entirely nonviolent means. After daily nonviolent protests that drew up to 25,000 people, Syria was forced to withdraw its troops from Lebanon on April 26, 2005. Now, before you start your revolution, you're gonna need to know what you're revolting for. What's your cause? What matters to you? If you don't know what you're trying to achieve, how can you possibly get others on your side? If you don't have a goal, your movement can fizzle out quickly and prove ineffective. So make clear goals for your followers so they know what they're standing for and what action to take. Now that you have a goal, you need to organize people. And the best way to learn how to do that is to become a community organizer. Oh, <laughs> sounds awesome. Where's the Bruce Willis movie where he's the community organizer? And that's the title of the movie. Bruce Willis, Community Organizer. Community organizers are people who work to unite people for common causes. This involves organizing rallies and protests, meeting with local leaders, and raising money. Many modern day revolutions are headed by community organizers, including Black Lives Matter. One of the best ways to become a community organizer is to start by volunteering. That's right, most things that lead to change are very unpaid. It sucks for your family that you need to feed. Find people in your area who are working for a cause you believe in and offer to help out. Here are some good tips to being a good community organizer. Set realistic goals, but don't play it safe. What you're trying to accomplish should be achievable. But don't overcompromise your morals or your integrity. The higher you reach, the more you're likely to obtain. You can also find that poster in any school library, right next to Anna Chomsky, sitting next to a baby Macaulay Culkin. It says, read with your best friends before they get killed by bees. Instead of advocating against something, try to reframe your goals in a positive way. People tend to respond more to what you're trying to do than merely being against something. You need to promote unity within your organization. No matter how big or how small your revolution is, there will always be people with differing opinions. That's okay. But you need to keep everyone on track and move forward towards your goals. Above all else, be persistent. You need to work constantly and tirelessly in your pursuit of justice. You have a strong vision and people behind you willing to back you up. Now you need to continue to get your message out there. The internet is one of your best tools you have at your disposal. The success of Black Lives Matter and Egypt's April 6th youth movement, for example, show that you can use the internet as a force for good. Of course, there's always the good old fashioned protest. Jump on that bandwagon but make sure your protest is on public property. Trespassing onto private property, even accidentally, is an easy way for the police to shut your protest down. 
Also, check to see if you need to get a permit for your protest. Your local chapter of the American Civil Liberties Union is the best place to ask. And now, let's get equipped! Wear multiple layers of clothing and goggles. This will help in the worst case scenario if you're shot at by beanbags or sprayed with tear gas. Bullets gonna hurt no matter what. You, you just f Speaking of tear gas, don't antagonize the police. We're nonviolent, remember? Also, make sure people attending your protest know their rights and don't break the law. Hand out flyers and post information online so protesters know what they can and can't do. This also gives you the opportunity to give your fellow protesters information on what they can do next. It doesn't matter what you believe in, a march or a protest may get attention, but in the end, you have to follow up with action if you expect change. Ah, viva la you! Your revolution is up and running, so keep fighting the good fight. Maybe one day your face might end up on one of those t-shirts they sell at the mall, right next to my poster and my fascist nuts. This has been Epic How To. Let us know what topic you guys think we should break down next in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe.